years of commemorating the sporting heroes of Trinidad and Tobago from Roger Gibbon in 1962 to Jareem Richards. Watch the First Citizens 2023 Sports Awards and Hall of Fame Induction 2024 live on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean, 6.30 p.m. Jamaica on Sportsmax and Scene TV. Your sports destination. Get the Sportsmax app now. All right, well, thank you so much for staying with us on this Friday edition of the Sportsmax Zone. This segment is sponsored by First Citizens Bank. Well, it's heightened anticipation for the sporting fraternity in Trinidad and Tobago as the Twin Island Republic prepares itself for the First Citizens Sports Foundation's 2023 Sports Awards Gala on March 16 at the lovely Hyatt Regency in Port of Spain. The prestigious event will honor the outstanding achievements of over 100 athletes who have demonstrated unparalleled skill, dedication and sportsmanship across various disciplines. Also scheduled to take place at this year's event will be the induction of awardees into the Sports Hall of Fame for 2024. Well, joining the show now on behalf of the First Citizen Sports Foundation is Mark Mungle. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. And uh, thanks for having me on the show this afternoon. Not a problem. So I'm really excited about this sports awards. And I'll, my first question to you will just tell us a bit about the background of this awards and why First Citizens Bank feel that it's so important to, of course, recognize and award the achievements of the top Trinidad and Tobago sportsmen and women. Uh, yeah, uh, well, th this foundation, as you probably know, has been around for uh, since the, since our independence. So it started as a gift back in 1962. Um, uh, and since then, we've been honoring sportsmen and sportswomen and youth, sp uh, youth sportsmen and women as well over the years. And um, for us, it's important that, uh, that we focus not just on uh, popularity type um, uh, uh, event, but one that recognizes excellence uh, makes it quite challenging for us because uh, excellence is not something that's easily assessed, particularly when we are assessing among different uh, sporting disciplines um, and sub-disciplines as well. Um, but our commitment has been uh, and continues to be ensuring that uh, we use the opportunity to show appreciation for those amazing athletes who've uh, continued to pound the concrete to really work hard in their different disciplines um, to continue to be to persevere and uh, to represent the right, red, white, and black. And so this is an opportunity for us to show the appreciation to those athletes and not only those who would have uh, made it to podium, but those who would have been successful at an international level. You know, some of those who maybe, let's say, just just uh, in the top eight or even in the top four. And you think about that, you don't medal it when you get fourth place. But uh, to be a, at the top four in, in your discipline globally is quite significant. And sometimes our athletes don't feel that they're appreciated. Well, this is an opportunity for, to let them know that we do appreciate them. Um, and so this these awards brings together those outstanding athletes from across all of those to over 30 disciplines uh, to show them that we do appreciate them, we do value them, do, we do recognize their commitment to, to uh, fly in the red, white and black in the sports sector. Yeah, and you just said in your opening remark that, you know, it's not a popularity contest, of course. It's yeah. just to show appreciation to these hardworking athletes. But I'm looking at the nominations and mm -hmm. for me, it must be quite a difficult job having to select. So what does it really come down to? Yeah, it is challenging and, and we've maintained a kind of commitment, a process. Um, we've stayed with this for, for many years and um, and and that, that involves, first of all, actually recognizing and valuing the national sporting organizations. So we allow the national sporting organizations to submit their nominations. So we don't select the, nom the nominees, the, the national sporting organizations, the ones who govern the sport um, and who work with the athletes and support them on their journeys. They are the ones who uh, actually nom um, submit the nomination. But then we, the, the awards committee, we go through a really extensive process and um, that starts with uh, reviewing all of the nominations that come in. We use a rubric um, as a guide. I, I always emphasize with my colleagues on the foundation that that rubric is a guide 
and the rubric essentially looks at the performances across different levels. So if you if you are a medal at, at a, an international event and an, an Olympic event, for example, or world championships would obviously be, be a higher value than something that at a regional level and at a national level. But even across all of that, there are so many nuances within um, the, the context of those events. So we it, it demands that we then do a proper review of each of those events to make sure that something that's presented as an international event, for example, you'd have a, let's say, world karate tournament somewhere in the world. When we do check that, sometimes it's predominantly, let's say, a U.S. or whichever is the host country, but just a few other international participants does not have the same value uh, as uh, and again referencing an Olympic Games. So that's important for us to, to check. And um, obviously, all of the, the participants have to be national. So that's important as well. And, and then that demonstration of their outstanding performance across all of those levels. We're looking for exceptional performances as well. So even though we recognize all of the nominees, the ones who move up to the top 10 and then eventually the, the winners have to really have exceptional performances at, at, at those levels. And of course, the results also have to be verifiable. So if an athlete says, look, I, 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 had a, I did a 100 meter dash in 978 down at uh, Manny Ramjan Stadium, but nobody was there, well, then that doesn't count, obviously, right? So. <laughs> All, all of the results also have to be verifiable. And remember, we take into consideration some of our athletes are foreign based, um, playing professional sport in other countries. And, and if they are nominated, we also have to verify the information that's coming to us. That's part of our responsibility to do the due diligence, to make sure that when we say we recognize in excellence, uh, the excellence is, in fact, verifiable. Yeah. And um, uh, just just to note, of course, even though we're in March of uh, 2024, these are, are the, we are actually reviewing the performances for all of 2023. So we always do our awards after the year is completed, and we have enough time to do the review of all of the performances. So, so the the achievements that we're looking at are only from between January and December of the year on the review, which is 2023. Right. And when will the top 10 be named? And another question, because I find this happens so often. Sometimes the people judging competitions like this are not very versed in sports. So they don't have like a wide range of sporting knowledge. Is there somebody like that on your team as well? Yeah. So actually, this this foundation is made up of a wide range of uh, sports um, personalities. Maybe that's not good with uh, sport administrators. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, that has always included a good uh, representation, a broad rep representation of the sports sector in the country. So, um, and we do have representation from past athletes. We've, we are actually lucky to have all of, all of the years that we've existed have had um, representation from past outstanding athletes, Olympians, and so on. But also administrators who are some of them still serving in the international on the or National Olympic Committee, for example. Um, but who have had experience within the sector. But it's more than that too, because one of the challenges, obviously, with um, selecting um, uh, the, the best in a group of all of the sports is, is a, a, an appreciation that you're not biased and, um, and that uh, you, 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 do, you, you have a, a level of integrity and respect. And that's one of the things that we've, the institution, the, the Sports Foundation has benefited from over the years, that it's been respected as an organization that's not biased, not involved in the bacchanal of sport, and uh, and the persons who serve are are, are well respected and um, and recognized for um, doing something that is uh, genuinely intended to show that we appreciate and value our best performers regardless of our affiliations in the past or otherwise and so that that helps as well so having a wide range of personalities on on the on the um, foundation who serve including i think for us and for me in particular one of the the most valuable persons on the on that foundation when it comes to the awards because the awards are not the only things that we do um, but when it comes to the awards or journalists, so we in, in the early days of this foundation, it was there were a lot of journalists who were involved and in, um, and we still continue to maintain that tradition. So we have Kwame, Kwame Lawrence, who's on board with us, and he's the one who this is his job. So he's involved okay. and understands and tracks um, and can give details um, of all of that. But again, we have members who are also themselves Olympians and uh, sport administrators in their own right. So we're not disconnected in any way from the, the sports sector at all. Yeah. Mark, I want to ask you a quick question before you go, because I know the Trinidad Tobago Olympic Committee has a major annual awards function that yeah. they put on as well in December of every year. And mm -hmm. uh, Nicholas Paul and uh, Michelle Lea, you were the winners for the 2023 TTOC Athletes of the Year. Uh, they are both yeah. nominated for your award as well. Can you just quickly say if there is a difference, if the criteria is different in any way, 
from the TTOC awards from the first citizens. I know that yeah. the TTOC is re basically rewarding Olympic sports. And I know that like cricket hasn't been an Olympic sport for some time. And I see where like Darren Bravo and Karishma Ramarak are among your nominees for your awards. So maybe your first citizens award embraces more sporting platforms than the TTOC does. I'm, I'm not sure, could you say? Yeah, a bit of that, and 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 as you say, the the Olympic movement was primarily started their awards primarily to focus on their Olympic sport. For me, to be honest with you, and there was a year or two that um, even the Ministry of Sport was doing their um, uh, uh, an awards that was similar in in in, the ter in terms of recognizing athletes. Uh, but the foundation, as the, the the institution that started this way back in '62, as part is is well established as the um, uh, as the go to for for these awards and um there's no competition here i think it's it's good that we have artists being valued and respected and appreciated and uh, if in fact plenty of many of our national sporting organizations are also hosting their awards so that we think that's a healthy thing um uh, we do know that our process is different as i mentioned so the the process that the the national olympic committee uses is is, a, is different and um and everybody knows that this event is a little bit uh, more upscale it's a bit of, more of a gala and um, and and I think because of the years that we've existed um, and the persons who've been recognized, but also because of the other dimensions that we've added, um, I think it, it is kind of the premier sports awards in the country for for some years now. And there's no there's no element of competition as I mentioned. We do even have um, members of the Olympic uh, executive serving on the foundation as well, as, and we've always had. So um, yeah, there's. Those parallel things happen. For me, if I had to, to make a choice, I would say let's limit our resources and, and collaborate. But um, as it stands now, you know, it's, you know, it's it's fair enough that other organizations want to also do their own recognition, which is okay, and, and we support that as well. All right, Mark. Well, I want to thank you so much. Keep up the great work, you and your team, the entire First Citizen Sports Foundation. And I'm very eager to see who gets this award because I have a personal favorite also. So <laughs> have a good evening. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And thanks a lot for supporting the event as well. All right. See you guys. Take care. Bye. All right. We're going to take a quick break and come back. We have a lot more sports to talk here on the Sports Max Zone.